Yeah, so I think more people are still coming in. Uh, uh, we will wait for some uh, some time, uh, another two three minutes, and then we'll begin. Yeah. Um, I just want to. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. Can I share my screen or? Yes, you should share your screen, yes. All right, I think uh, we should start. Uh, we can start and wait. I mean, let have left people come in in between. That's okay. So, All right. Yeah. Um, First of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is Muna Juma al uh, Today, I will give you a little bit of training on uh, how to develop um, a career uh, development plan. Um, the objective here is just to uh, give you some kind of techniques which is used for, an, for employees who actually want to do for themselves or for their subordinates if they have people reporting to them or career coaches so some career coaches they face um, clients who wants a career progression or success plan so this technique will help also the career coaches to start doing with their clients if the client wants to do some sort of career change or uh, career uh, progression right so the the title is, is The Path to Career Excellence. Uh, the agenda today is, um, first I will explain what a CDP is, Career Development Plan. What are the benefits of CDP? What is the four Ds, which is CDP process? And what are the tools and techniques used for each process? So then at the end, I will give you a real application just to give you an idea how to implement it, which is I did it for myself at work uh, and based on that you will understand how the tools has been uh, are applied um, and at the end then you can ask questions so i will not read the chat now i will read it at the end so what is cdp CDP is a career development plan is written by a list of short and long-term goals that individuals or employees or, or uh, managers or CEOs, whether actually um, uh, related to companies or individuals, have pertaining to their current and future job or career opportunities. And a plan seeks a formal and informal experience to assist the individuals in achieving their goals. These goals should be linked to their personal strength and potentials. Uh, in a later stage, I will explain to you how the strength and potentials affecting you uh, to generate your uh your goals and based on that you do your smart objectives as well so bear with me at the end so what are the benefits of cdp uh cdp is considered an investment to individuals to to make a new change or a difference in life and the people surrounding by that individual also to assist individuals to achieve their goals and ensure employees retention so if you are you are actually a manager you want to do for your employees it's good actually to start doing uh, and actually coaching them or monitoring them to do their CDP because it's, it's an individual uh, obligation. It's not like I have to, for, as a manager, I have to force my employees. Actually, the, every individual should have a career development plan. Uh, the third thing, which is to uh, reset realistic expectation of career growth by suggesting timeframes 
and milestones to happen. So in case you are looking to go higher in your career, like you are, um, you want to move uh, to have a career progression, is actually to from a manager to head or head to director or to become a CEO. So it's good to have a realistic um, career growth plan and stick with a specific time frames in order to achieve your goal. Uh, it's also considered a self-reflection. So people, they don't see what kind of skills and techniques they need, okay? And what are the area of improvements for them and what are the opportunities available? Also to increase individual motivation and productivity. So you will be away from the routine job. So you will have actually a new uh, exposure uh, at your career or at uh, your uh, personal uh, objectives. Uh, to focus on a skill development contributes to learning growth. As I said, you can actually gain a new skill or talent. Uh, it's a general sense of responsibility for managing your own career path. So it's not your manager responsibility to tell you to do it, it's, or how to do it, or how to implement it, and how to monitor it. It's your responsibility and accountability to, uh, to ensure your career path is successful. At the end, to earn better methods of working, working ethics, and to, to be cope with the new trends. So for example, now we are after the COVID-19, we're going back to work. The lifestyle of work will be a little bit different. So you have to understand what kind of techniques and skills are needed to be adopted in order to go back to work. We will not use the same skills we used before or the same resources or materials. So that's why career development is very important and it's a life document. So whatever, your object, whatever objective it has been achieved, you generate a new one and you keep going. So what is the four Ds? I use this concept usually in any training I conduct. Uh, is it related to strategy, to come up with a new strategy, or related to learning and growth, or it's related to projects? We usually we call it four Ds because every process starts with the letter D. So the first process is discover, the second is define, third is develop, the last one with deliver. So now I will explain every process separately and what kind of techniques needed for each process. So let's start with discover. Discover is actually, a, it's to know your current status. So where are you? Uh, what your career aspiration? What's the existing experience, opportunities and challenges you are facing? So basically it's a self-reflection techniques you have to conduct which is one of the uh, self-reflection techniques we usually use even as coaches with SWOT analysis. Others uh, I added here for you guys, which is 360 feedback. So you can ask people about you. Uh, some can be someone from your uh, relatives or family or friend, or it can be your colleagues at work. It can be a stakeholder supplier you are dealing with. So that's called the 360 feedback. So it doesn't have to be someone you know, maybe you someone you dealt with. The more variety you have, the much accurate information you can get. So you cannot go to your family member and ask for a feedback, you know? So you will not have a full uh, idea about what kind of uh, strengths you have, what kind of weaknesses you have, what kind of area of improvements you need. So that's why it's good to have actually a different uh, people they contribute to your 360 feedback. Uh, personality test, I, uh, on the techniques, I will give you two, two websites I used, uh, and even I, I gave it from my clients as well. And coaching and mentoring. Some people, they actually recruit or a coach or a mentor at that stage, from the beginning of the stage, to help them how to develop a career development plan. Some people, they can do it by their own, and they actually require a coach at the, actually to stick to their plan. And some people, they want a coach from the beginning till the end. Uh, for people who are doing for their current job, it's very important to understand your current job description. Why? Because if your career aspiration to move to the next level, you, have, you must understand what your current job description is are you actually be able to achieve the rules and responsibility written in that job description? 
And if you have the visibility on the new role job description, it's also good to know the difference and where is the gap. Uh, that the last uh, technique, which is using different coaching models, those people uh, who are actually career coaches, or if you are a manager doing for your, because you are a, a coach as well to, to coach your subordinates, you can use a couple of techniques like Oscar, SWOT, and coach models. And I will not go through the details of those models, but you can search on the internet and they, it's, most of them are related to the workplace. So what are the techniques related to define process? The, as I said, there is a SWOT analysis, which is this one. And there are actually two tests I use for myself, which is high five test and 16 personality. What I like about the high five, say, uh, high, uh, high five test is actually you can upload your result in, uh, in your LinkedIn account. So people, they can know exactly what kind of skills you have. Um, and for the 16 personality test, it tells you as well, um, your uh, skills, it's actually similar to which celebrity. Like for example, when I did mine, I actually have similarities with Barack Obama, for example. So it's a good, it's a good tool. It's actually give you some sort of uh, motivation as well to see someone similar to you. The 360 beat back, which is the one at the, uh, in, my, in my right, uh, I just picked it up from the internet. It's, it doesn't have a specific format. You can create your own. Like some people, they use survey monkeys, for example. They ask a couple of questions randomly, send it through WhatsApp or through email. People, they just uh, answer. So you will get some sort of uh, data uh, behind it especially when you specify skills and talents that you have and you want to see people are they agree that you have this specific talent or you need an area improvement for this specific talent or for this specific skill so it's a great tool as well the second process which is define when we talk about define is actually to define your goals uh, some people they confuse between what's the meaning of goals in objective goals usually are, are related to the what is your aim it's usually a broad statement it has a long-term perspective it's not uh, actually a short term and it's it's also it gives you some sort of challenge so it's not an easy goal it should be like having some sort of, of challenge to help you excel and have the correct exposure and usually for a career development plan, you usually need from three to five goals, not more than this. Why? Because you don't want to be over uh, estimated your success, especially when you do your mon uh, monitoring at the end in the delivery stage, which is the last stage. So you have to be realistic as well when you put your goals. Don't put too much and don't put too less. All right. So that's why they, the norm is actually from three to five goals. How do, you, how do you do that? So once you define your broad aim or broad goals, you break this goal to smart objectives. It can be one objective, it can be two. It, it depends how you want to break it down to make it easier for you to achieve. Then you uh, prioritize the task and identify the focus areas. So for example, I have five, six goals in my life. And, uh, and then I have to present, what is most important thing for me? Okay, maybe option number two or goal number two. So goal number two is much important. So I divide it to a smart objectives based on my priorities, based on my time frame, based on my current status, based on my, um, uh, like uh, it's, it's uh, the time, the budget, the everything what I have, it's, I, do, I prioritize my task based on that, right? So what are the techniques? As I said, you have to do a smart uh, objectives. I just put for you, I know most of the people, they know what's a SMART, but I just put for you here just to, um, to understand what, what SMART stands for. It's specific, manageable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. So when I give you my example, you will know exactly how to create a SMART objective. So it should be specific. So it gives you a tangible outcome and it, it it shows what actually you are trying to achieve. Measurable, it has actually some sort of um, 
of uh, how, how you ensure that you successfully achieve this objective. So it should be mentioned there to, to, to know the progress of this objective. Attainable, which is actually reasonable to be achieved. Relevant, which is related to your uh, goal. So you not be like far away from it. So it is, it's actually related to your uh, goals. Time bound, it has a time frame for it. Is it, are you finishing in six months, one year, two years, three years, five years, whatever. There are two types, by the way, of CDPs. If I will refer to the time bound here. Some people, they do CDPs because they're moving from a, a they're having a change. Like what? For example, I'm moving from an organization to another organization. I will not put my CDP, which is five years plan or three years plan, because it's a new change for me. So I have to make sure that I adopt the new location. And based on that, I put my new CDP, which is three to five years one. All right. Some people, they do a short term one, just in with a quick win objectives. Uh, six to one year uh, object, six months to one year objectives, then they develop the three to five years. Some people, they go straight forward three to five years plan. So it, it, it depends how you feel comfortable about it and what kind of scenarios uh, your career development is based on. The third process, which is the most important process, is how to develop it. Okay. There is uh, a famous model called 70-20-10 model, which is now I will explain it to you how to do it. The 70-20-10 model is actually 70% you learn through your job or to the activities they are doing or through um, um, either you are working or you have your own business. It's something actually you learn it through your day-to-day -day activities. 20% you learn it through people, other people. Like what? For example, I can have a cross-functional chain. I can visit another department and learn from other. I can have a coach. I can have a mentor. So I'll give you a couple of examples later on. But just to give you an idea, it's not directly from you. You need a support for that from another person. The 10% is actually the courses, which is the learning and development courses. Why it's actually 10%? Because, because whatever you learn through courses or, or um, it's, it's online courses or actual classes, if you don't have an application, 50% of what knowledge you got from the classroom, it will go. All right, so, so that's why the 70% is huge, which is actually how to implement, how to develop yourself in your current career um, uh, or current career or your current job. So this is more in detail. So what does 70% mean? Okay, so it's actually related to your job responsibility. Uh, it might be you go to another new project, uh, a new team member, um, being a mentor, um, so your 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 style of working become different because maybe you are not, you're working alone. Then you have someone reporting to you. So there is a change. So you have to learn how to mentor this person, how to coach this person. So it's something actually through the job experience. As I said, if you have a cross-functional change, um, any volunteering work or any board of director position. So if you are in a very high position. 20% which is mentoring, coaching, and feedback. So anything you get it from people. It can be one-to-one -one meetings with, uh, with your line manager or with the um, stakeholder with, or with your uh, subordinates. At the 30, 60 uh, feedback, this coaching, the ment if you're having a mentor. Uh, and uh, also if you do job shadowing, which is not mentioned here, but I, I in my example, for example, job shadowing means you, you move with to a certain team to learn. It's like interim is not for a long time, just to learn a specific skill. Uh, then you go back to your own uh, team. So is it within your boundaries? It's not like you are jumping from a company to another company. No, it's, it, it's with your own uh, team. 
um, classrooms, which is I said, e-learning, education, courses, conferences, reading a book, uh, or attending a webinar or TED talks, all those is actually coming under the 10%, which is a normal learning. Now the last um, uh, process, which is deliver, which is actually you implement your CDP and develop a success criteria. Some people, they said, if I am doing a CDP for my work, this is the right time actually to have uh, a conversation with your line manager. And at the same time, you have a conversation on a, an agreement. If your career development plan, it's up to what's his expectation and is not, uh, and it can be uh, it's achievable and it, it provides you some sort of uh, stretch or exposure. So an agreement sometimes happen at, at, uh, at that uh, time in order for you to deliver. Uh, how you do that, so you monitor, evaluate, and close the objectives, and you use some sort of quantitative or qualitative method to measure the success of that specific objective. So what are the techniques? As I said, quantitative and qualitative. So I put a couple of just, just then what's the difference, but actually the norm is qualitative is actually related to words, quantitative is related to numbers. So if you are building your own business, of course you have to see how your finance is. Do I actually gaining profit? There is a revenue generated, which is numbers. Uh, some people, they do experiments and surveys, which is have a statistical analysis so you, can, you generate data uh, from it, which is number-based. The qualitative is actually related to your um, a feedback from others. It can be feedback from line manager or feedback from suppliers or individuals. You can conduct actually in, in, in meetings, uh, focus groups, observations. So mostly it's actually words uh, to, to see that if you achieve that specific objective or that specific goal. Real application. So I'll show you one example that I did for myself, um, just to give you some sort of idea. And, and it will give you what kind of challenges I face and what kind of advice I can give you from, from my side. Um, but it's not like, uh this is actually the rule or the model it just 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 sharing an experience okay so that's my SWOT analysis which is the discovery uh step which is step one so i did my strength weaknesses opportunity a third just to go back uh to go a little bit earlier with that um my aim was actually to go to the next step in my career so to move from my current position to a higher position and I work in strategy and development. So I deal with massive projects. Um, so to, to move to, this next, uh, um, to the next step, I have to look to projects from a strategic point of view, not from a day-to-day -day activity, how actually to achieve a project. So it's, it's a little bit different type of, of roles and responsibility on the next level. So I stayed in my strength. So if you can see, I divided my strength to technical and behavioral. So I stayed what kind of things I have as a, as a um, someone who specialized in projects and strategy. And I put my weaknesses. If you see my weaknesses, I, the one thing I learned here, you have to, to use wisely the words. So if you see my first one where I said, being a public figure, build a personal brand. Some people, they will say, is it a presentation skill? Is it a public speaking skill? It's what? So for, for me to avoid people look at it from a negative perspective, which is, it does mean I don't know how to speak to people or I don't know, I don't have the correct skills. So that's why I said public figure or public speaking, you know, which is a high level from a presentation skills, which is actually for juniors. Okay. And the second one I said is statistical analysis, data manipulation. So because I work in a project, so usually we don't do a kind of analysis only very high level. We don't use numbers that much. 
uh, only like if budget I achieve it or not achieve it. it it's basically like this I don't use analysis behind it why I didn't achieve this budget or why this risk has been there and what kind of improvement I can make for my next project so I don't use statistical analysis that much at my work so it's for me it's just a weakness and it's and it's considered an area of opportunity as well so so always think about a weakness and you have to link it to opportunity how to create this weakness to opportunity always think from that perspective so based on that you will select the the right words and weaknesses and you will select um a, the, the the weakness that it can be turned to opportunity then i put my opportunities based on my weaknesses all right and then the threat, which is something out of my control. So I put a couple of stuff, which is, um, which is I request a interference here from my, my land manager. So when he sees the threats, those things is not under my control. I cannot, for example, um, do a training because uh, it needs a budget. So he has to create a budget. So uh, to have an exposure to a specific, unique, and complex project, uh, he has to give me those projects. I cannot go and and and, and just have it. Uh, limitation to manage a small or medium team. So he has to give me a team to manage. Usually I manage stakeholders, but I don't have a direct, direct reportees to me, all right? Uh, and limitation to exposure to senior leadership. So I don't know what's happening in leadership uh, meetings. So, so he has to, this person or my line manager has to help me to be part of the leadership meetings. I hope you got the idea how to build it. And one thing I have to say here, some people they see career development plan is a one day job. It's actually, it's a huge um, um, contribution here. It's not a one day job, or even when you do your SWOT analysis, you have to revisit your SWOT analysis a couple of times. So maybe you write it, close the laptop, go back again and read it again. So you will see, because when we do a self-reflection, we, we don't intend to write uh we love afraid how to to put our weaknesses specifically or what kind of area opportunities i need sometimes we don't have full experience and knowledge sometimes we have to ask for feedback or consult someone or ask for help and support as i said sometimes you need a coach sometimes for this or or a, or a, a mentor if you have a mentor at work for example can help you with that coaching is different than mentoring and everyone knows so so it depends which uh, person you want to get involved in that uh, specific process. All right. All right, so then after I did my SWOT analysis, I have to do the define, which is the second process. So I have to define my goal and put a SMART objective. So I select for my weaknesses is actually to have data manipulation and a statistical analysis. So my goal is to enhance my statistical analysis and data manipulation skills. It's a broad aim, right? So when I turn it to a smart objective, you will see like I'm very specific. Develop a quantitative analysis in order to facilitate the project delivery stage uh, for a capacity project by second quarter of 2020. That's very specific and it's a smart objective. So I can, and I know exactly what I have to turn those objectives to actually tasks for me in order to achieve this objective, which is aimed to the, to the existing goal. I might have this goal and I have different objectives underneath it, but for me here, just to show it to you, which is I have actually in my recreate the book plan, but just to show it to you, I select only one. Okay, now the how I divide it to 70, 20, 10 model, which is the third step, which is how to develop it, all right? So the 70, which I said to you, it's within my work. So I said, develop data analysis for survey or research conducted to define the benefits of such an investment or customer feedback, which is related to my work, which is part of the business case submission, which is related to the um, um, project life cycle, let's say. Then I have to demonstrate a dashboard, illustrating all project updates, timeline, milestone, budget, utilization, and risks. So I don't have 
this technique, right? So I have to talk to someone, which is the 20% comes. So I need a support. So what I have done, I said, I have to work closely with the capacity planning team and business formation. It's two different teams within my department or my unit. They are actually dealing with numbers, right? So to, to build a business case to justify such an investment. So it's actually kind of job shadowing or rotation or a cross-functional change uh, for a period of time, right? Just to learn this specific skill, how they, what kind of tools they're using and what software they're using and how they manipulate the data from the data comes from where, all, all those kind of things. And I said it's two times a week. So I will go two times a week to that specific team to learn who are those teams, which is, as I said, business information and capacity planning, which is BI and CP teams. So I need a feedback from their side and mentoring also required. Ask for 360 feedback also. And I might have a career coach or mentor. It can be within the teams or someone outside. The 10%, which is comes to the learning I need, right? So I need to know about, so Tableau. I noticed that in my organization, they use Tableau a lot. Anything related to data and statistic analysis or how to share information to the higher management, they use Tableau. I don't know if someone aware about it, but it's, it's a very great software, uh, which is actually a training I have to go, all right, to know about the software and what kind of tools and techniques in this specific software. And I said, I've put a deadline. I have to complete it by second quarter of 2020. So this dashboard has to be finished by that time. So this is my, how I measure my success. Are we planning to, to finish whatever requirement by that specific date? So actually, I finish it by the specific day. I build a dashboard, but don't worry about the numbers and everything. It's actually, I play with the numbers. Uh, it's, it's not look like this, just, just, just to show you. So that's one of the dashboards I have. So I, I actually, I create four or five dashboards actually for my projects. That's actually what I have for you for career development plan and feel free to ask any questions. Hello. Thank you, Muna. Uh, there was some great learning there. I'm sure we'll have a lot of questions from people. Uh, uh, so let, let's hear from others and then maybe if I have a few questions, I'll ask you. Who wants to raise hand that you see on the screen anyway? <laughs> Who is raising hand there? <laughs> So if no one is asking, I, I'll probably go and, and uh, ask you, Muna. Uh, okay. how would, what scope do you see of this learning in career coaching uh, kind of uh, coaching process? Yeah, so what, what, how I learned about this, actually, my career coach gave me this, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, when I ask her to, to have a career progression and I want to move from my current position to another position. Mm -hmm. And she asked me to do a career development plan because it, it's a broad objective for her mm -hmm. to, to tell her like, okay, I move to move up. Okay, how to move up? Where are you actually currently? Mm -hmm. So she has mm -hmm. to understand where I am, all right? And at the same time, it has been implemented actually in my organization. So this actually process is implemented in my organization to help people to progress okay so any career coach it's a very nice tool to use with your clients actually mm -hmm. to, to to tell them uh what kind of, of of how they can actually be structured because because everyone has a specific goal like i want to be to open my own business okay how you will open your business so you have to put it as a plan you know uh what kind of objectives you want to do the, what kind of things you want to achieve, right? I want to become, for example, a head or a director. How you can become a head or a director? So, so it gives you more um, self-reflection to yourself. What are your current status? What kind of weaknesses? What kind of strength you have? What kind of things you need, even as a support from the coach itself? 
so you have to be, so you break this broad goal to very small uh, objectives or small goals, even for the coach to help you. Uh, so that that that's why I feel how it supports actually the coaching business. Right. Uh, will you share this presentation? Have you shared it already, or will you share it now? Uh, I can share Sanchez. it. Right. Yeah. yeah, I can yeah, share so, it. Yeah, please share it with Sanchit. We will post it on Facebook group because you know as the process we uh, we post it on Facebook group for people to access this later. Yeah. Um, and it use right. actually also the coaching techniques. The SWAT is actually in the coaching technique. Uh, and I said also Oscar and coach, those are kind of techniques it, they have been used uh, with me through my career coach. So, mm -hmm. so that's why I put a couple of models for you. Uh, mm -hmm. It just, it helps you if someone wants to specialize in career, because most of the people when they specialize in career and I, and I, I'm giving you my experience on that. I mm -hmm. went to six to seven career coaches. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm. And and most of them they they keep asking questions, but it made me more confused rather than being structured. Mm. The only one I went to her, she gave me this uh, to be more structured, and based on that we proceed with the improvements. So, mm. for example, if one of my objective is actually to find a job, assume, all right. So mm. one of them is to find a job. Mm. Okay, so. For her, she has to understand who I am first. So what kind of strength I have, what weaknesses I have, what job aspiration I want, which position I want, what kind mm. of skills I don't have now. Do I need a training? Yes, let's go and do a training. Is it a networking issue? Is it my LinkedIn account is okay? So all those kind of things, the mm. career coaches, they look at it. If you are really specialized in career. Mm. So you don't say like, for example, I will not ask a question like, uh, okay, what kind of organization you want to go to? What, I will not ask those questions because the baseline is not set properly yet. Then mm. I have to ask, so if this individual is not ready to go mm. to the market, that's my responsibility as a coach to make this candidate ready to go to the market. Mm. Mm. Can you go back to the slide where we spoke about the application and the process basically, the four Ds you had there? Um, I have to go back. I mean, um, just go back to the slides before, right? Yeah, but it just talk. I don't know why. Okay, sorry. You, you see at the screen, right? I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which the whole process, which is this one? Yes, absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's just understand as a, as a coach on this model here. Yeah. You have got a client. How do we apply this in coaching as coaches? So let's take an example. So if I coach, so if I coach someone in career, you mean? No. So yeah, as a, of course, as a career coach. But let's say my yes. example here is, uh, I want to establish a business. So okay. I I go to you and I say, Muna, I want to establish a business of of um, coaching business, right? Okay. So, uh, how will you take me through that? Let's just just, just discover more here. Okay, with the, with, let's take this as an example, right? Mm. So if I want to build a coaching business, I want to be actually a famous coach, right? Mm. Okay, mm. so first of all, I have, I don't know where it goes on. So first of all, I have to discover myself. Mm. What kind of, of skills they have. I, I am actually, is it I am actually a certified coach or not? Mm. Do I actually have the techniques to become a coach? Do I mm. have the correct learning? Do, do you have, so you have to ask yourself those questions. So what kind of strengths and weaknesses and opportunities here? Okay, I need it to become a coach or to open a coaching business because I cannot go to the market telling coaching business and I don't know what's the meaning of coaching, for mm. example. So that's actually the discovery part, all right? Right, right. So you know your current position and where you want to aim. So you check the market trends, you see uh, other coaches actually in the market, what kind of qualification they have. So you kind of, it's, it's basically a research in this mm. stage. Yeah, and, and I think you also said in the presentation about reflection. So yeah. it's really about reflection, reflection, knowing what, who you are and what's your identity and then translating that into your business. 
Yes. So reflections, SWOT analysis, and 360 degree, I think you gave, exa you gave examples of. Yeah, yeah. So, so sometimes people, okay, I want to be a life coach. Okay, your coaching business is specified for what? Life coach is also broad. What is your mm -hmm. specialization? Which one you want to select? Uh, uh, sorry, why you... so, so we're talking about define now, right? No, no, it's, it's just a market. It's just a market research. What are the coaches business out okay. there? Okay, mm -hmm. so it's usually you, you know all the types, right? Mm -hmm. Then when you go to the definition, then you select mm -hmm. one. Yes, I have the skills and the capability and everything to be a career coach or to be a lot to be, for example, um, business coach or to be like you specify your your specialization. Mm -hmm. And some people they go broad. Don't get mm. me wrong. Some people, they mm. go broad. If mm. they have, for example, a business, which has mm. had different different people with it. So maybe you have a community supporting you this. For example, mm. you are not alone. You have like mm. your friends, another coach is there or another. It's like, for example, CTA, for example. You're not specifying a specific area. You have plenty of people, respond, I mean, specialize in different things, right? It's, it's the same thing. So if you have this as a, as in the discovery, so you have your own people, you have the, people they are uh, happy to to start a business with you that's in your discovery so when you define you know exactly what current resources and what kind of the skills you have and experience and then you define your uh, coaching business and this is the definition part which is mm. number two mm. okay so then you have your own broad goal okay and then or goals and then you have to divide those goals to smart objectives so you want to build, as you said, a coaching business. All right, so one of the goals, for example, for you to break this down is actually to, to know your specialization is an objective, right? Who actually, then you break this objective, as you said, to 70, 20, 10, all right? So maybe you need a specific training, so that's the 10. Uh, you need a support, maybe you're not specialized in this one as individual, maybe you need another person to help you with that. Uh, on the job, which is you to be accredited and uh, having a membership with ICF or all those kind of things, which is that that's you, right? Which is a 70 percent, right? So that's that's the thing. So the your broad goal should we break to objectives it can be achieved. So I cannot put like for example 10 objectives and I know I cannot achieve them. Mm. So you have to be a little realistic about the type of goals. So that's mm. why if in business, specifically in business, you have to discuss your goals or objectives with the people with you within the business because they will have different um, feedback as well. So you don't mm. do it alone. Mm. All right. If you have someone involved with you. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's only when you are probably doing something which has stakeholders involved and not your, yes, your, yes. your personal development growth plan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. got you, got you. So, so, so some people, they said, is it career development is similar to development, uh, to person development plan? If you search in the internet, there somehow there is a link, but usually that's the, the, the norm is your career development should be personalized. It, sh it should not be related to your job only. There mm. is a personal element involved there. Mm. And that's why you do your SWOT analysis because you're talking about self. You, mm. you talk about your, your strengths and weaknesses and opportunities. So, so I think the, uh, then the example that I started or was working with you right now was starting a business. So it should mm -hmm. rather be that how capable am I or am I ready for starting a business? Then yes, probably yes. this whole process will work better. Yeah, so that's in the business. discovery part. So that's why I tell you, are you ready mm -hmm. to do it? Do you right. have the skills and capability to do it? Do, yeah. do, do you have the uh, the the... The personal brand actually is it built yet mm. or not yet so all this is actually in the discovery mm. so when you define maybe you need a person branding maybe mm. you need actually specific skill maybe you need membership you need actually you have to you have to go to courses when, that's actually the definition part mm. and then when so, you develop you document what you have done in the definition you mm. just document it in a stru structured way and you then you, you do it wise and then you break it to task which is 70 mm. 20 10 and then mm. you deliver it. Basically, this is how it goes. Mm. Mm. So it's it's very useful model for for somebody's self development than the process development. You know, which I said about establishing a business. It's rather how am I how ready am I to start a business? Yeah. So very. Thank you, Muna. There was some good learning for me. Let me hear from others if 
they would like to share something. Maybe we can start sharing the screen. Yeah. I have a question. This is Jyotsna here. Sure. For 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 Muna, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, go first yeah. of all, it's really an excellent presentation. It's very comprehensive, covering everything very well. The question I have is, uh, perhaps maybe I missed a part of the presentation, but what I see is it does talk well about the knowledge domain and the skills domain. And just now, while responding, you touched on the competency domain. Uh, where, which is, I mean, another domain uh, ahead of knowledge and skills. Now, and that becomes more useful when people want to change their uh, career lines. So how does that get tackled through the various frameworks you mentioned in your presentation? So in, you mean how I can put my qualification there? If or I need a qualification, sorry, I didn't. No, I'm, get talking about, I'm talking about I'm talking about behavioral competences. So, if a mm. person wants a change of line, now they're working in a particular uh, area, but mm -hmm. they wish to ha move to another area for which mm. perhaps they they possess uh, mm. even better competencies. So, you know, changing lines is one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what they call it a change program. So when, you, when I said to you, when you do a short career development, it's not the long one. So basically here, um, when you want to move from a department to another department, all right, so your line manager is different and your, your, uh, your maybe job uh, responsibilities uh, are different, right? Is that what you meant, right? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So that's when I said an agreement should be happened, which is this is actually during, the, it's between the define and development stage. If you are moving from a department to a department, you should actually have an agreement with your new line manager. All right? If you know that you are moving. If you are not moving there, actually your aspiration to move, all right? So there are certain techniques you can do with that, which is I prefer to have actually a job shadowing or uh, cross-functional change. Did you, get, did you get my point? So you are in the, your current position, but you work level with that specific team. Because yeah. at the end, you want to be uh, a, a, I mean, known by that line manager, right? How do you know that you know exactly the skills that he needs. And it, so it's part of your um, showing yourself. You get my point? So you can actually do it in your, when you develop your, um, your, your, your uh, career development. You mentioned that. I need to go and, for example, as a task, to, to go and visit this uh, team and offer, for example, uh, my interest in their, in their uh, uh, in, in their department. You, you, have, you can do that as well, which is I have done it. So, Josna, I think competency frame, framework that we're speaking about, I think if it's a change in, in overall uh, role and responsibility, maybe it has to be redone. Or, or does that make sense, Josna? Um, yeah, yeah, to some extent. Uh, what basically I was trying to say is people are doing certain jobs, and I think she has uh, answered it to some extent. Yeah. So certain people are doing certain jobs, and those jobs require a set of competencies which they possess. Right. But they also possess additional competencies where they might be fit for doing another job which they aspire for. So mm. the job they are in is not their dream job, but they really want a dream job which is somewhere else, and for that also they possess the competencies. So yeah, it it's is. like, so it, yeah, it is switching careers, but they don't have the other job in hand. They're just aspiring mm. for it. So mm. how do mm. we, I mean, um, that's one of the very practical areas. I mean, about the little True. bit into uh, career counseling, I won't call it career coaching, because I've learned it's not, it wasn't coaching. So they're mm. like, uh, most of the people say, I do this job, I'm earning, but I don't love this job. So the next question is, what's your dream job? So they do possess competencies for the dream job, but they aren't yet there. So how do, you, how do we get them to there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so th that's actually when you define 
your current pos current experience, your current skills, and what skills you needed. You, you get my point. So the discovery, that's your self-reflection. I know that I want to be, to go to that, that specific job. I don't have the skills. I don't have the qu correct qualification to go to this new job or my dream job. So how to get there? You, you get my point. So yeah. then you have to define your uh, career aspiration. So what kind of, of skills needed for that dream job? What kind of qualification needed for that? So you have to break it. So you, here you have to define your goals and objectives. Mm. Yeah, so, so it Muna, depends your on style, your specific... Yeah, yeah, sorry. Your style is more of a coaching style and how Jotna mentions more of a, a counseling style. So we, we, I think that answers Jotna's question too. Yeah. Hmm. So anyone else who's got a question? And Muna, let's hear from others as well if they have questions and we can answer yeah, sure. them. Haris, uh, Muna, that's me, Kinjal. I just wanted to say thank you. I think it was a really good presentation. And what really resonated with me is the development part where you said that 70% of what we learn is on the job. And if mm -hmm. I think about it now, actually, most of what I am learning today is while I am coaching. Mm -hmm. So yes. you, most of what we learn, the, the crux of it is on the job. And 20% is, you know, I would say something like this where we're learning from each other is also very important. Yes, yes. That's in the 20%, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I always say, Kinjal, thank you for bringing that up. I, I always say that what we're doing with you is we're teaching you how to be a coach. We can't really make you a coach unless you go on the field and start to work as a coach. So, you know, yeah, thank you, Kinjal, for bringing that up, yeah. So guys, any other question from anyone? If, if you have questions, we can stay or else we sign off and say goodbye to each other. Muna, any closing note from you? Uh, what, what I, I um, as, a, as a closing note from my side, when I did this uh, for, for me in the career, actually it opened for me another opportunity, which is one of the objective I have, which is the personal brand, if you see, or public speaking. Actually, I start lecturing, which is nothing related to my job, mm -hmm. all right? Um, which is, I had uh, an exposure actually to even to present this to you. Um, and I have to, to present the same I have on Thursday, for example, which is actually absolutely nothing related to my job, but it helped me in my public speaking skills. So I'd be able actually to, to present something, have a discussion, people ask me questions. So, that's what actually the career development plan helped me is actually to to find my potential in something else, which is uh, I love training, for example, now, uh, which is absolutely nothing related to my work. My work is actually project and writing strategies and those kind of things. So, so peop, I, I recommend people to take this serious, seriously, even to recommend it for for others, for their family or friends, because it does help you to find your potential. And that's actually what coaching is, to find potentials and how to excel and improve yourself from a different perspective. It doesn't mean you have to be at work. Maybe you have a specific skill or potential. It doesn't actually work in your specific job. It can be for another job or for another field or another, right. another uh, work environment. Thank you, Muna. That was amazing. Uh, you are part of the Facebook group, right? Uh, yes. Yes, please do comment or like or do something so that people can see your profile, contact you from there if they need any any support yeah, or any explanation from you. Um, is it all right? We post it on Facebook and YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I believe there are not questions. Any, we don't have any questions anymore there. Guys, we will be posting it on Facebook group. Please, uh, maybe another four hours later, you'll find the presentation and the video on Facebook. Uh, those who missed part of it or or could not attend, uh, can always go to Facebook group uh, and find. Harris, it. do you want me to send it to you by like an email? I send it to the by email. Yes, please send it okay. to support. Uh, Sanchit will get it and will post it. There. Okay. Okay. So thank you everyone for coming in today, and I look forward to meeting you next okay. COP call. Thank you everyone. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Thank you.